Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast, where we're going to go over Kamarnock versus Celtic preview for tomorrow's match. Massive game for Celtic. One point needed to clinch the title. Title can be clinched tonight, of course, if Rangers drop points, but we're not interested in that. We're only interested in ourselves. Let's bring in John. How are you doing, John? Hi, I'm all right, Xander. All good. Thanks very much. Uh, just great weekend, wasn't it? Great, great weekend. Uh, still, uh, still got that wee buzz about me, I think. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was it was different class. Beautiful day, beautiful weather. Just relaxed after. I was nervous watching it. Obviously, very nervous, John. Went it, but uh, we got the two, the three points that we needed. Six points clear, John. Now we're only looking for this one point. Why is this game just as big as the game at the weekend, John? Well, of course it is. I if not, it's a bigger game. You know, it's a title clincher. And like you said earlier, it could be decided the night if Rangers fail to get a result against Dundee which uh, I mean like, I'm not expecting any kind of result but I've got a lot of players out tonight Xander so uh, fingers crossed I'd, but then again I'd rather win it the Celtic way you know yeah yeah I know what you're saying John uh, uh, I'd, I'd take it tonight I would take it if they drop points and we win the league you know I'll take that absolutely I would take that so you know after the, um, the season we've had if you like it's, it's, it's not been playing sailing this season obviously um, but we're getting there, John. We're, it's the business end of the season. Uh, whether we win it tonight, whether we win it on Wednesday night, it doesn't really matter um, as long as we get that point over the line. That's what it's all about, getting the point over the line. One mere point is all it's needed. Look, we're not taking anything for granted. Anybody listening, we know it's going to be a hard game. Come on, it's not just going to sit back and let us win the league at Rugby Park that's not going to happen there's going to be a battle the more night Xander make no mistake about it I don't see an easy game at all yeah I was listening to Derek McInnes interview earlier there Johnny saying that there's going to be a massive turnout from the Kilmarnock fans and a massive turnout from the Celtic fans so there'll be a lot of eyes on the game and he's sending his team out to put on a performance and a battling performance like he's been doing all season you wouldn't expect anything else for Kilmarnock would you? Uh, I wouldn't expect it else for Derek McInnes <laughs> if you want to look at it that way but uh, no look, he's right he's, he's right to have his team go out and fight it's Derek McInnes wouldn't have it any other way I think he's got a bit more uh, respect for himself as a manager than Naismith if you want to put it that way Derek McInnes wants to win things with Kamal he's got his team playing well and they deserve to be where they are they've beat Celtic twice this season they've beat Rangers this season so He's not going to uh, send his team out to play any other way other than try and get that result. We, we expected that. I spoke about this weeks ago. This was the potential banana skin. This game. And yeah. that's the way it will be. It is a potential banana skin. And I expected a lot of Commandant fans to be there. They're going to want to cheer their team on for the last game of the season at home for them. And they're qualified for Europe. Their fans are going to turn up in numbers and they're going to uh, give them their full backing, as will the Celtic fans. Yeah, it makes for a good game, John. It makes for a good game. I'm really looking forward to it. So, we'll, um, but we'll leave out the other news, John. We'll get into it in a wee minute again. Just want to mention the competition for this week. Midweek competition. This is our first midweek competition. And we're looking for the minute of the first goal. Minute and the seconds, please. Two guesses each out of the comment section. Uh, yeah, it's for the it's for the Zippo Lighter and the Celtic Forever Pen Box set. So, you're getting both prizes, prizes if you're the closest. Obviously, the winner will be announced on the poach match on Wednesday night. So, uh, good luck to everybody with that. Competition time. Uh, minute of the first goal, whether it's Kamarnock, whether it's Celtic, we're just looking for the minute and the seconds and put your two guesses in, in the comments section there. All right, John, just a couple of wee snippets of news before we go into the preview of the game. Matt O'Reilly obviously won the player of the season on three fronts. So, congratulations to Matt O'Reilly, player of the season. He, wasn't, he didn't have a great season, John, but he was still good enough to win player of the season. Aye, well, he's a great player, Matt really. I'm not taking anything away from Matt. He probably, does he deserve the player of the season? A lot of Celtic fans uh, think he's had a, a fabulous season. Am I the only guy that disagrees with that? I don't think Matt really had a great second half of the season. He's had spells in all these games he's played poor. He's had wee decent spells. But he's no... Uh, He's no set that the Heather like for me. The first half of the season, definitely, I thought it was fantastic. Second half of the season, no so much, although there was some decent performances. But uh, 
It looked well done to Matt Arelli. No taking it away from me, won it? Uh, for me, I seen the wee clips of the, 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 the awards and that. Joe Hart was what Matt Arelli's choice was, and I kind of disagree with him. I think Big Joe Hart's had a, a fantastic season under. Yeah, I think it could only have been between Joe Hart and Matt Arelli, because they were the only two players that were injured during the season. Uh, Matt Arelli had a, he had a a more difficult second half of the season, like the full squad, really. The full team had a, a difficult second half of the season. But the last three or four games, he's came back in to join. So uh, he's, he's scored all the goals as well, hasn't he? Was it 17 goals this season? So it's absolutely, absolutely outstanding figures for a midfielder. So, yeah, as you say, John, well done to Matt O'Reilly, player of the season on three fronts. I'm not going to go through it all. Just, uh, just want to congratulate Matt, our outstanding midfielder. And obviously, John, He's, he's been linked with a move away already. Obviously, you know, that's going to happen when one and play the season. But he's been linked with a move away all season, hasn't he? Uh, he certainly has. But uh, I just touched on the player of the season thing. I, th- I think uh, Joe Hart could have possibly have picked that up. And Matt Arelli agrees with me on that front. He's a fantastic player, Matt Arelli. Uh, like, like you says and I've says, and I'll say it a hundred times during this campaign, he had a great first half of the season. But the second half after the, the, the winter break, his performances have been hot and cold, if you ask me, Xander. But he is a top quality player, I think. I, I think he's uh, going to go for big money if he does go at the end of this season. I think it's going to be big bucks, Xander, because he is a top quality player. Yeah, I agree with you, John, with the Joe Hart thing as well, because Joe Hart has put off save after save this season, kept us in this league title at vital points in the season. So it was a close one between the, both the players. I thought Joe could have won maybe one of the awards, but all three go to Matt. Congratulations to Matt. Unlucky to uh, our goalkeeper, um, Big Joe in goals. So unlucky. Uh, he didn't go out with a bang, if you like. He didn't get his Player of the Year awards. Um, but uh, OK, John, we'll park up there. We'll move on. There'll be a bit of snippet of news. Two years ago, John, we, we, we lost Tom Rogic. He left for uh, West Brom, John. Tom Rogic, two years ago. Uh, do you think we've missed him? Uh, no, I don't think so, no. At the time when they left, I thought we're going to miss big Tom Rogic, and we did. Mm-hmm. He was a big game player, Tom Rogic, wasn't he? And I, uh, but right now, looking at the way the team's performing right now, I don't think there's any place in that team for uh, Tommy Rog- Rogic standard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying, Johnny. You could have, if we still had Tom at the club, maybe you could have got some appearances and uh, been on the bench bench to strengthen that bench, especially when we had all of the injuries. But uh, six appearances for West Brom, John, and one goal. So I don't know what's happened to Tom down at West Brom, but he's not quite doing it, is he? Uh, I didn't even know he was at West Brom, to be honest with you. Right. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't follow players' careers when they leave Jotter. I know that there was news on him. He's, uh, I didn't even bother reading it. I, I'm not really interested in what ex- Celtic players and managers are doing, to be honest with you. It's no end I've ever in my life followed, you know. If somebody yeah. leaves Celtic, I'll say either good luck to them or, or they're a money grabber or whatever. Mostly it's always good luck to them. I wish them all the best in their careers and all that. But uh, no, I've no. I wish Tommy all the best. Great servant for Celtic. When he scored some great goals, maybe they'll uh, forget the, the winner against Aberdeen in the final. I wouldn't say he's a Celtic legend, but great player for Celtic, uh, great servant and I still wish Tommy all the best but I didn't even know he played for West Brom Sander. Yeah yeah, yeah. West Brom John, two years he's been there now I think um, so uh, no great stats um, in fact I think he went to Australia first and then West Brom but anyway uh, good luck to Tom Rogic anyway John that was two years ago he left. Let's get into this game uh, obviously we've won the league at Rugby Park before John the Nakamura free kick title decided uh, Back in 2007 when Strachan was the manager, we'll never forget that either. So we're looking for a similar performance and result tomorrow night. Well, exactly, aye. Uh, back to the the days when Nakamura scored the great goal at Rugby Park and all that. Well, we've got a few uh, fantastic Japanese players there at Celtic. Can they repeat it? Can we have maybe Kyogo step up with a, a world-class goal to Clinch the title, maybe uh, Hitati, he's got it in him. Um, who else is there? Japanese players, Dyson, of course, Iwata, 
take your pick. All fantastic players, Xander, every one of them. Yeah, yeah, take your pick, Jose, John. Uh, but we're under no illusions for tomorrow. Nick Amarnock have made it tough for us all season long, and Rangers for that matter. But uh, Don Robertson, John, he's the referee for Wednesday night. Aitken's on the VAR. So that's your, your officials for the game, Don Robertson. So hopefully he has a quiet game. And we cruise through this on Wednesday. That's what we're looking for. Uh, but we'll get into that in a wee minute. The betting, 71 Celtic, uh, sorry, 71 Kamarnock to win the game. 19 to 4 the draw. And 4 to 11 a Celtic win, John. Let's touch on the draw. 19 to 4. I've caught the man maths. That's around about 561, 5 to 1. So. They're not even giving the draw a chance. They've just made Celtic hot favourites. Aye. Uh, it's just, look, Celtic's got a full team now. That's the good news, isn't it? I've not heard anything on the Alistair Johnson injury, of course. Uh, that was a... Still, every time I look back at that tackle, that's why the worst tackles I've ever seen in a derby match, Sander. Uh, but apart from that, I've not heard any news about Alistair Johnson, but if he's fit and we've got a full team at Look, it will probably still be a close game, but I would be favouring the, the Celtic win if we've got a full team. Up. Yeah, John, as Alistair Johnson, I was looking at it, he's, I think he's okay. I think he's okay for Wednesday night, so that'll be good news. We've got a full squad to pick from there. No injuries whatsoever. So, uh, and Kamarnock, they've got three or four players out, John. So, uh, But it doesn't matter about Kamarnock, it's all about Celtic and Wednesday night. It's all about getting that point and getting the the league title over the line. Um, let's go into some forum. Kamarnock have won three out of the last six. Celtic have won five out of the last six games. So Celtic uh, obviously with a better forum there. That's why we're sitting top of the league. So um, forum, 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 forum goes out the window, John, didn't it? Because it's uh, Kamarnock have really got nothing to play for and Celtic have got everything to play for. Well, Kamarnock have got something to play for. They want to, it's the last game at home this season. They're going to want to finish with a win. That's that's just the way it is. And they're going to have a big crowd there. I think Celtic fans are just getting the one stand as usual behind the goals. But uh, look, Kamarnock are not there to make up the numbers. They'll want to put on a performance. They've just qualified for Europe and they're going to want to show that they're worthy of that. You know, So uh, it's going to be a tough game under no illusions at all, but what you've also got to remember is when Commander beat Celtic, Celtic's team was thoroughly depleted, Zander. So, they've not played a full strength Celtic yet. And every team that's facing this full strength Celtic squad, uh, they've fallen by the wayside, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, that's right, John. Yeah, that's, as you say, they've not played a full Celtic squad yet, so they'll fully fit Celtic squad, should I say. And as I said at the very start, John McInnes is sending his players out there to win that game. So we need to be wary and we need to be on our toes. Uh, let's go into some of the the previous fixtures, John. The last time we played them, finished one one each, sorry, at Celtic Park back in February. Uh, 2 1 win for Kamarnock back in December. These are league games. A 3 1 win for Celtic at Celtic Park in October last year. And then obviously Kamarnock put us out the League Cup back in August. 1 nothing win for Kamarnock. So obviously they've uh, they beat us a couple of times, and then there was a couple of wins before that as well. So uh, we know the form, John. We know the history this season with Kamarnock. Uh, we just need to put that to one side, go out there, win the game, or at least draw the game. And uh, John, it's a bit of revenge as well. I think we should be looking for a bit of revenge as well. Well, I don't know. I don't know if Brendan thinks that way. He probably does a wee bit. Although I was more up for revenge when it came to Hearts because of the way the game panned out at Tynecastle. But come on, look. There was nothing bad about the game. They're not, they're players, they've got half decent players. They didn't, it didn't bother me as much as it did come on, look. Uh, Sorry, Hearts. But I'm not, I've not got a revengeful mind on I'm just wanting the league over the line, to be honest with you. But I would like the Celtic players to take into uh, consideration that, look, they've beat us twice this season when we had depleted teams out in the park. Now that we've got a full squad, let's see how they cope with it. Dyson and all that, they're flying the new Xander. So, it's going to be, I think, maybe a slightly different game, but still close. Yeah, obviously the surface is going to come into play as well into the plastic pitch. But we can't keep going on about that plastic pitch, John. We just need to play it. Every other team has to play it. We've got to play it. 
Um, yeah, but I think I think we'll be okay, John. We'll get to the predicted scores in a wee minute, but let's get to the predicted lineup. What's your prediction for the lineup, John? Same as Saturday, or do you think there'll be a couple of wee changes? I don't think there'll be any changes. They want this league over the line. I think it's just going to be the same as you know, full squad. Use them. That's what they're there for. Got a full squad. Get it out in the park. Get the league over the line. We don't need to name the squad. We know what the full squad is. But um, I, I just get it. Get it over the line. Full squad. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, get it over the line, John. Uh, so no changes then. Just the same team that started against Rangers. I don't see why he would change that winning formula. It's our best players, Xander. That's what's winning these games right now. But in case anybody's wondering what the full squad and our opinion is, I'm sure you'll agree with me. It'll be exactly the same. Be yeah. Joe Hart, Carter Vickers, Liam Scales, Alistair Johnston, Greg Taylor, Carl McGregor, Rio Hitati, Matt O'Reilly, Kyogo, Dyson Maeda and James Forrest. Yeah, the only thing I can maybe say is if if Arthur Johnson is carrying any sort of niggle, he may start with Ralston. But apart from that, John, yeah, I just think it's it's the same as same as same as same lineup as we had on Saturday, uh, just to get the job over the line. Aye, that's it. Just get the job over the line. Get the full squad out. Get them all playing at hundred percent. There isn't going to be any winner other than Celtic. It's simple as that. That squad. Is way stronger than Kamarnock. But Kamarnock will get their battling players in it. They'll fight for everything. But uh, it's up to Celtic to uh, break them down this time. Celtic's problem against Kamarnock. The second half, when we played at Rugby Park, when they beat us 2 1 in the league, the Kamarnock players were by far the better team, Sander. By far the better team. But it was a depleted squad. Uh, but Celtic's first half they missed a dozen chances that could have put them to bed in the first half so we've got to put these chances to bed that's why I'm looking at it looking at it sorry as usual put these chances away and they'll not have a problem with any team in this league yeah yeah that's right John we've been pretty wasteful this season and many many games the chances we've missed so yeah put our chances to bed there won't be any sort of problem Uh, do you think the the fact that we only need a draw will play in the Celtics' minds, or do you think we'll just be out there looking to win the game outright, no problem, put them to bed early, and then we can celebrate? What do you think? How do you think? What do you think's gone through the players' minds just now? Get the result. I don't think they'll, Celtic will be playing for a draw. Absolutely not. Celtic will not be playing for a draw. Celtic would be playing for that win, Xander. We all want to see that. There's no Celtic fan on earth will know that will want to see Celtic go and play for a draw. It doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen with Celtic. They will be out there looking for that one, put Kamal to bed. Uh, and, you know, back to uh, Celtic Park uh, that night for the party. Yeah, totally agree, John. It's got to be the one. No no thoughts of a draw at all. At all, we've just got to win. The only time a draw's got to come into our heads is for three minutes of injury time and we're sitting at one each. We can maybe play it into the corners or whatever, but apart from that, I've got to go for that one. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree with you, John. All right, John. Score prediction time. Uh, what are you thinking, John? What are you thinking for Wednesday night? Uh, I think Celtic are up for this, but I'm no one to uh, get, you know, too optimistic about, about it because Kamarnock will be there to put on a performance for the fans as well. But I'm thinking 2 0 Celtic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, there'll be a lot of nerves there on Wednesday night. I think, John, it's I think I'm going to say one 0 Celtic final score, one nothing to Celtic because we're quite wasteful, aren't we? In front of goal just now, even, even at the weekend there against Rangers, we blew chance after chance yet again, same as what we did at Highbrooks, even though we scored three goals. So, I think, um, as long as we get the one goal, get it over the line, I don't really care what the score is to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I'll say one nothing to Celtic, John. All right, fair enough. That is going to be a close game. I agree with you, agree with you on that front, but uh, I'm fancying Celtic for a couple of goals. The more Sander, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe Kamal will score a couple as well. I don't know, but I'm never going to say a draw. I'm always going to say the win for Celtic and just to stay on that trend. I'll say two nothing. 
two one, two nothing, but my prediction's gonna be two nothing, just so I can get one right. Yeah. All right, John. And will the league be won before then tonight, John? Will will Dundee get a short draw or even result against Rangers? And we don't even need to worry about Wednesday night if that's the case. There's a big chance Rangers could get a draw tonight because uh, what Dundee need the win. Dundee really need a win, and they'll go for that one. Don't kid yourself. Tony Dock, he'll have his team out fighting for that one at Ibrox. I've got 11 players missing. So, you look at it that way, they've just been beat in the biggest match of the season by their rivals. They were humbled. It should have been, like, I don't know how many goals Celtic could have scored that weekend. And they wanted, really. But decided to just showboat and walk about. And, but this is a big game for uh, Dundee tonight as well. So, you've got to take that into account. It, there is the potential for Rangers to draw that game or even lose it. Yeah, yeah, their heads up everywhere, wouldn't they, John? So, uh, the only title could be wrapped up tonight, folks. It could be. We're not saying it is. We're just saying it could be. So, the celebrations might be tonight down at Celtic Park. So, uh, we'll wait and see. Um, <laughs> um, all right, John. Uh, I just want to mention the competition one more time because we've not got many entries because everybody was on a high after the Glasgow Derby on Saturday. Maybe was interested in competition. So, we'll mention it again. We're looking for the minute of the first goal and the commander game on Wednesday. Minute and the seconds, please. Give you a better chance of winning the prize. Put your guesses into the comment section. Two guesses each. And the prizes are the Zippo Later Celtic Forever Monogrammed and the Celtic Forever Monogrammed Box Set Pen. So get your entries in, folks. Don't be shy. If you're listening, say, oh, I better not do it because I've never entered before. Just get into the competition, into your comment section and get your entry into the, the comments there. And good luck to everybody. Two prizes, eh? I mean, there isn't a one podcast that's doing this, by the way, giving away three prizes. So maybe there is, I don't know. I don't don't listen to them. But when I did, I've never seen it in like three prizes. So uh, get your entries in. It's, it couldn't be easier. Well, the two prize thing is, it's just because it's... Uh, last week was the two prizes because of the Glasgow Derby. You know, that was more or less confirming... We'd won the league if we won that one, so I was giving away the two prizes as a celebratory thing. And then tomorrow night, we don't even normally do a prize giveaway in midweek, John. It's always the weekend. So, obviously, this is to get it over the line. Two two prizes, celebratory, get it over the line, and uh, the winner gets two prizes just as a wee extra celebration, John. There's no sponsors or anything like that giving these prizes away. This is all free and out of Xander's pocket, and he puts a lot of effort in. So, uh, I don't know, just... I don't know. It's great prizes as well. It's not as if it's just junk. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, John. Yeah, yeah. I just I appreciate the viewers and the listeners. So I like to give a wee bit back, you know. So yeah, I appreciate everybody that listens, views, leaves a comment, etc. So it's always good to give a uh, a wee bit back, right, John? Um, let's park it there. That's the preview of the game, then, John. Good luck to Celtic on Wednesday night. Oh, it's going to be another nervy one, John, isn't it? You know how nervous we will were watching the Glasgow Derby at the weekend, but this is going to be just as nervous, I think. Aye, aye, it's got to be nerve wracking Make no mistake about that. It's, uh, and we're twitching on the velvet yet again. But, look, it might come to the morrow night. We might not have to worry about anything. It just all depends on what happens tonight, which, uh, like I says, there is potential for a slip-up tonight. No saying it's going to happen. Uh, I don't know. Would you rather it happen tonight and that's it? You don't need to worry about tomorrow night? You know, I was going to ask you the same question. <laughs> Would you rather? If Celtic, if Celtic won the league tonight, John, I'd be more than happy with that. I'd be, I'd be ecstatic with that. You know, as I said at the start there, after the season we've had injury ravaged team throughout the full season. You know, you've got to laugh at Rangers that Clements today. Uh, on his interview for the game against Dundee, going on about the only difference between the two clubs is Rangers injuries. <laughs> My goodness, we've had injuries the full season. We're still sitting top of the league, John. Aye, and it's all our best players that's been injured. And they've all been out for long spells. Hence the reason they managed to climb above us in the league. But once we started getting our players back, we started to see who the best team in the league were. So, Clements, uh, he, he's got no case for saying that at all. 
Celtic's got better players, and uh, once we get it over the line, the best team won the league. Simple as that. Aye, John. I think it's just a case of Clements blaming everybody bar himself. He's blaming the players. He's blaming the injuries. He's blaming the weather at Dundee. He's blaming the press. He's blaming, but there's no blame put on him. Yeah, uh, no. Well, if he's going to blame anybody, he can blame his own players. They're the ones that lost him the league. Uh, and they're going on about losing to. Uh, he said, I think he was talking about losing to teams like Ross County, and Motherwell, and uh, drawn against Dundee or whatever. Well, that's happened to Celtic this season as well. Losing to these teams, no Ross County, right enough. We're well, not that bad, but <laughs> we've lost to uh, Kamarnock twice. Drawn with Kamarnock. Uh, we've drawn with Aberdeen, drawn with Motherwell, I think, as well in there. Uh, a lot of very dodgy games for Celtic. The Hearts as well, lost to them twice. Drawn to Hibs. So Celtic have had a similar type season in that respect. Celtic have had a lot of really bad results this season, but we still find ourselves six points clear at the top. So it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Celtic are just a better team. Yeah, that's it, John. And then anybody that's worried about uh, start Rangers still having a chance to win the league, John, anybody that's out there that's, you know, thinking, you know, there is people out there, I mean, I thought about it myself, people thinking that, you know, Rangers beat Dundee tonight, it's back to three points, then we lose to Kamarnock, it goes to the last game, Hearts are going to lie down to Rangers, blah, 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 blah. The betting on Celtic to win the league as it stands just now is 1-100 to to win the league. And the betting on Rangers to win the league just now, John, with two games to go, is 500 to 1. What do you think of that? I think there might be a lot of optimistic Rangers supporters out there sticking a fiver on that 500 to 1 uh, bet. Because, believe it or not, there is uh, fans that just never give up. On both sides, I mean. There'll be a lot of Celtic fans, if we were six points behind, still betting on their team winning the league. So, look... There's the goal difference as well, which will come down when they play Hearts if it does come to the last game of the season. Because we know Naismith's going to cheat. He's going to have his team lying back against them. We, know, we all know that. That's a guaranteed yeah. win for them. Uh, but Celtic against St Mirren, if it comes down to it, Celtic Park, there are a lot of nervous Celtic fans, Sander. Make no mistake. Yeah, I think uh, when it comes to both their games, John, it'll be two dead rubbers. So, yeah, that's... <laughs> That's that's my that's my viewpoint on it. I think it'll be tied tied up between tonight and tomorrow night. Aye, I think so. Aye, aye. But the people in the comments, there, uh, there isn't a, a comment I've read so far. Or the, the, the people who follow this channel are concerned. So, I don't know if that goes by anything. It's just a lot of Celtic fans are of the same state of mind. Uh, the league's yours. Yeah. Okay, all right, John. Fair dues. That uh, that wraps it up for the preview. Then that was quite good. That was interesting. Good to hear your thoughts, John. Let us know in the comments what you think. Is it going to be wrapped up tonight, tomorrow night, or at the weekend? Or just let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, all right, John. Let's hit some comments as we're speaking about comments. Have you got any for us? Hi, Chris. D was first up. How are you doing, Chris? Good to see you. Hi, Chris. Uh, he says, we should have had another penalty with Diamande, or whatever his name is, Diamande, flicking the ball away from an oncoming reel. I remember that one he flicked at a BB's arm. Do you remember that? Do you know that? Do you know something? That, why was that penalty not given? He's actually flicked the ball away with his hand and then brought it down to his side. That's another stonewall penalty. It certainly was, aye. Uh, that's a long comment for Chris, by the way. I am just want to pick out a couple of wee points in it. Um... But I, he's right about the, the penalty. That was a stonewall penalty denied. Just flicks that way with his arm and nothing happens. So, I don't know. I don't know. But it didn't I don't happen. Even, I so, don't even think that was looked at by VAR, was it? No, it wasn't even looked at by VAR. Uh, but I don't know. It, it never happened, so we can't go on and on about it. It just didn't happen. But uh, thanks for that comment. Chris, I'm just picking through. It's a long comment, mate, and I just want to batter through these a day. Try to keep the podcast doing a wee bit in time. Yeah. Yeah, cheers, Chris. Elaine says, have a wonderful night, all my fellow Tims. Hail, hail. God bless everyone. Hope you're both well, John and Xander. Thanks for asking, Elaine. I'm doing okay. 
but cheers, Ryan. Hope you're okay and uh, had a great night. Thanks for asking. And I hope everybody else had a, a, a good and safe night on Saturday. Aye. Paul McCune says 2 1 to the Celtic. Hail, hail. Thanks for that, Paul. Was that for tomorrow? I, don't, I think he's just talking about the, the game at the weekend's under. I don't know. We need to ask Paul. See, <laughs> I, always, I always say to Paul, what is it you mean in the comments? And he never answers. But uh, <laughs> thanks anyway, Paul. Yeah, cheers, Paul. Cheers, Paul. I hope you're right both times, by the way. I hope you're right both times. I don't know what he's talking about. It could be a 2 1 to Dundee the night. I don't know. You don't know. Paul just, he's, he's mad. I think it's a touch of madness about our Paul. <laughs> ah, he's quite funny. He's quite funny. Yeah, cheers, cheers for the comment, Paul. But I think you could say Paul's got a dry, dry sense of humour. I don't know. Don't know what it is with Paul. He's, he's mad. We, we love him on here. Thanks for that, Paul. <laughs> cheers, Paul. Uh, James Doran says we bossed the game today and could have easily have been six or seven goals to one. And I thought Willie Collum had a poor first half. Hand, handing out the yellow cast to well, like, exactly, handing out yellow cast to Celtic players for nothing. Uh, but he did nothing. The Celtic players did nothing, and the Sefco support won't be singing the John Lindstrom song tonight. I don't know the John Lindstrom song, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, talking about songs, John. Talking about songs, and by the way, he's right about the yellow cards, etc., etc. But we went over that in the post match. But thanks for the comment, James. But James's comment about the song for Lindstrom. Do you think Celtic should be making a song for Maida? If there's no one already? Oh, aye. aye he deserves one, doesn't he? Dyson. But uh, no lot of uh, songs for Celtic players right now, is there? Rio Hitati. Rio Hitati, Callum McGregor. We heard Joe, Joe, Super Joe. I think Joe thoroughly deserved that for the Celtic fans the first I'd heard it. Um, who else has got a, a song, Celtic players? Uh, James Forrest. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about be James Forrest. Maybe Kyogo. I don't know James Forrest. I don't remember ever hearing a James Forrest Celtic song. But then again, I'm watching the game. I'm not listening to what people are singing sometimes, unless it's a derby game. But uh, no, I don't remember ever hearing a James Forrest Celtic songs under there. No, I don't. No, it's been there all the years and uh, won as many a trophy. But uh, yeah, get get that you're act together, Green Brigade, and get a song made for. Guys in my either, at least. <laughs> Aye. What about uh, Liam Scales? Jink, he should have been up for a shout for player of the year. Been very consistent. The only thing, yeah, Scales have been brilliant, John, but the only thing was he came in after maybe about eight, ten games and then he started getting his, his, team, his place in the team, John, so he wasn't in, like full season. Remember at the Aye. start, he, was, he wasn't playing at the start and then he came in, uh, I think we were going to Ibrox, I think it was at the time. And he got flung in at Ibrox and played a blinder, remember? So, yeah, I agree with that. He could, he should, he could have been up there, uh, at least in the running anyway. Absolutely, he could have been. He's had a couple of wee dodgy games, but overall, very consistent, solid player. Um, and like you say, Zeller, only Joe Hart and Matt Arelli have been the, the fully fit players the whole season. Bang on, John, bang on, yeah. And injury, I'm used to, let's quickly run through it, right? Maeda, international duty and long term injury. Uh, Kyogi, Kyogo, Kyogi, <laughs> Kyogo injury, uh, two or three weeks. He was out injured. Uh, uh, Hatati was out for most of the season. Callum McGregor out for a couple of months. Big Catler Vickers out for a few months. Liam Scales was even out for a couple of weeks. Uh, Greg Taylor was out for about a month. Alistair Johnson was out for about three months. Uh, Am I missing anybody out? James Forrest, I think he just wasn't getting picked. Uh, am I missing anybody out, John? Um, Awata was out injured as well. Um, let me have a think. The two big centre-halves that never get a game, your Lager Belkas and your Rockies, they were both out injured long-term as well, John. And there's probably a few more that are missing it. Aye, aye, aye. There's just been tons and tons of injuries. Uh, Kyogi, that's a great name, that Kyogi Bear. <laughs> I was getting excited. I was thinking about him buying in that one all the more night. <laughs> aye, aye. I love wee Kyogo. I was enjoying watching him at the, the awards. Brilliant. Yeah. What a wee, wee guy. just makes you smile, doesn't he? He's always laughing and all that. Yeah. Yeah, the team seems to be playing with a smile on their face in the John, didn't they? A big smile on their face. Yeah, big smiles all around. That's what we want to see, um, especially on Wednesday night. Aye. By the way, are you still having fun? 
I'm still having fun, John. Yeah, hope Brendan's still having fun. He's uh, he did say he was going to have fun, so hopefully it's lasted a few days for him. He's a man of his word, isn't he? <laughs> Tells no lies, sort of that way. He told, he told your man Clement he was going to have fun, and he stuck to his word. So well done, Brendan. What do you think of Brendan this season? He's done a good job, Sander. Um, considering the amount of injuries he's had. I think no him personally, I, but the players that he's had injured. He's done an outstanding job, hasn't he, John? He's uh, as you said, we played Kamal in the League Cup, John, and we must have about eight players out of that game. At top players, Hatati, McGregor, your Cameron Carter, Vickers, all these players were all out in that game, John. So it's you know, he got knocked out of the cup and uh, you know, that's when the, the, the press murmurs started surrounding um, but he done a brilliant job. All the injuries all season long, sitting six points clear. At the top of the league with two games to go, outstanding. Aye, I, I think he's done a really good. There's still a lot of uh, Celtic fans on the, on the sitting in the bench but when it comes to Brendan. I think he's done a great job this season, considering the amount of injuries that that team's had. I've never known a Celtic team to be to be depleted for so long during a season, and he's only just got his full squad back and he's utilised it brilliantly. I think I think he's done a fantastic job. Yeah, as soon as he got that back quality back, John Winter, as soon as he got the quality back and fit, uh, we saw a different Celtic. Absolutely, John, totally agree. Nah, he's no sitting on the bench, by the way. Celtic fans sitting on the bench, I say, sitting on the fence, I meant to say. But I, Dundle, he's done a good job, uh, Brendan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You think he'll stay for next season? I think he'll stay for the 10 in a row this time? I think he'll stay for at least his three years contract, John. He'll stick to his word this time and he'll stay the three years. Aye. Aye, I loved his interview and he was talking about people treated him like an amateur when they first came in. Like, Look, Brendan's a top quality manager. And uh, I, I think he's done a fantastic job. So uh, thanks, Brendan, for everything you've done this season. You've done a great job, man, if you're listening. Yeah, yeah thank you, Brendan. We'll see the real Brendan on Wednesday night, John, when he's, li when he's uh, getting lifted above the players shoulders and getting flung into the air so we'll see the real Brendan then when he's in celebratory mode Aye Anyway, let's move on the comments, I agree with everything you say Xander Next comment up was a new name I've not seen this guy before, Michael Keogh Michael says Cracking pod lads, great crack or crack if you're for Scotland Yeah, Cracking pod lads, great crack Love from a Galtay mountain boy you men always make me laugh. Thanks for that, Michael. That's nice of you to say, mate. And hope you're doing well there over in Ireland. Toby's great to hear from our Irish uh, fans of the show. Yeah, John, that was kind words for Michael. And Michael, get into the competition, pal. Just get your entry into the competition because I don't think he did put a com uh, entry in there, John, did he? No, I know that I've seen so far. But uh, Michael, if you're listening, mate, get your entry in for the competition. Have two guesses. The minute of the first goal, that's all you need to do, Michael. Have two guesses in the comments. You have, you're in with a great chance of winning the Celtic pen and the Celtic lighter. And that goes for everybody else. But thanks, Michael, and it's great to see you here, mate. I appreciate that, Michael. It's good to have you on the channel, Paul. Right, and don't be a stranger, Michael. You all come back and leave your wee comments. Always good reading out the comments. Yeah. Kegel or Moon, never seen you here before, pal. Good to see you here. And he says, or she says, Henrik, Muddle, Ronnie D., Kevin Bridges, Big Samaras was there too. I think there is a Legends game going on to be played. So I think that's why they were all there for the game. All right, I'm not sure. I did hear about a Legends game and some players being picked for the Legends game. I did hear about that, but if that's what they were there for, then fair enough. But, uh, it was good to see them, wasn't it, John? Brilliant to see them all. Uh, Ronnie Dyla, great to see, see Ronnie. Hasn't he changed a bit, Ronnie Dyla? Has not changed one bit. Kevin Bridges, it's, he's talking about these players at uh, Celtic Park. Kevin Bridges, I've seen him signing a million autographs. That was good, eh, Kevin. They couldn't get a second, but he still stood there and signed them, was under. Yeah, well done, eh, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, Henrik Murdo, of course, Henrik the, the legend. Anyway, thanks for that, Keg Alorman. Yeah, thanks for the comment, Pam. Good to have you on the channel as well. Next up was, uh, let me see if that's Paul McComb. I don't think that is Paul McComb. It's Gillian Drakowski. Nice Scottish name there. A lot of uh, tongue twisters the night for you, John, eh? A lot of tongue twisters. Ah, ah there's a Polish name that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and uh, 
Gillian says, goal time on Wednesday, 67 minutes and 10 seconds. Well, get another guess in there. You've got two guesses, remember, uh, Gillian. Yeah, that's it, Gillian. Get another guess in, pal. Just add another comment. It's not a problem. We'll get that noted into the, the notes. Uh, we'll check it on the post-match uh, on Wednesday night. So good luck with that, Gillian. Good luck, pal. Right. And good to see you here, Gillian, a new commenter yet again. And uh, I'm glad I got your name right, Drakowski. That's no bad for me, by the way. Trust me. Yeah, that was that was good. I liked that. That's well done. Superb. Ah, I'm on form now. Uh, Jim Ritchie <laughs> says, <laughs> goals on Wednesday. Celtic, 55 minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, Jimmy Ritchie's another new commenter. So get another guess in, Jim. You've only had one guess. You've got two. Yeah, plenty of nice new comments, John. I noticed that uh, everybody's welcome. Leave your comment, uh, your comments, and keep entering the competitions because it's a weekly thing. We do it every single week. Uh, so good luck for your entry, Jim, and thanks for for joining the Celtic Forever podcast. Ah, uh, thanks very much, Jim Ritchie, brother of Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> that was true. <laughs> I don't know any other riches, uh, but there you go. Anyway, James Dorham is up next again. The scoreline didn't reflect the game today and should have been a cricket score. I agree with you there, James, as we created so many good chances and restricted Sefco to scraps and can't wait till Wednesday to seek revenge on McInnes and Kelly. Yes, another one wanting revenge. On us. I heard McGregor talking about revenge. I don't know if the players should be talking about revenge, really, but Callum did say it. He did say it, came out of his mouth, uh, a wee revenge mission, he said, in his interview after the Rangers game. So the players are thinking about it, John. The fans are thinking about it. So as long as we can do it, it doesn't matter. It's like we've got to do it on the park. Exactly, I. Well, it's not going to be easy, but revenge isn't something I had in my mind. I just love Celtic scalping all these teams. Uh, but uh, thanks for that, James. Thanks for your comment, mate. Always good to see you. Yeah, cheers, James. Always welcome. Um, always welcome. Well. One of our uh, fantastic regulars. We both like James on here. Yeah. Uh, next up was another regular, Roseanne. Always great to hear from you, Roseanne. Yeah, hi, Roseanne. And Roseanne said, I'm trying for the lighter. So I'll say, and she gave us her guesses. She says, I hope our brave lads do the buzz. I think she meant the buzz. Um, yeah. Yeah, brave lads. Brave lads indeed, because... It, it, what a season I've had to put up with, you know, and and sometimes the performances weren't great as well this season, John. You've got to be honest. Uh, sometimes the performances weren't great, but they regathered, re, regrouped their thoughts, came out the the traps again, John, and uh, raced their way ahead at the top of that league, six points clear. So well done to every single one of our lads, as Roseanne says. Well, well done. Oh, aye, there'll be more praise at the end of the season, Zander. Don't worry about that. Um... My praise every game. We can't thank Brendan and the boys enough. They've done a fantastic job getting us uh, into that position. Anyway, Rosemary says, uh, no, Rosemary, Roseanne finished her sentence with, uh, what a day, lads. Fantastic. Let's keep it up and go kick some donkey, John. Kick a donkey? Yeah, that's you giving it trouble for saying ass, remember? All right, aye, donkey ass, aye, all right, I get it now, aye. Let's go kick some donkey. We even <laughs> kicked a giraffe to death once. <laughs> 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 all right, mate. Um, all right, thanks, uh, Rosemary, Roseanne. Sorry, right, thanks, Roseanne. Great wee comment there, pal. So appreciate that. Keep the comments coming in, Roseanne. Uh, thanks for that, Roseanne. That was quite funny. Go we'll kick some donkey. Um, <laughs> a few donkeys in Scotland I'd like to kick, but <laughs> and that's not to do with the football. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> anyway, any more comments, good. mate? Kicking donkeys, what next? I don't know. Yeah. We would never sell our club. How you doing, pal? Good to see you. Uh, we would never sell the, our club. Was over the moon with the win yesterday, Sunday, uh, Saturday, sorry. And it could have been a cricket score. Uh, well, it could have been a cricket score, Celtic, but again, no take their chances. The penalty missed and all that. It just really annoys me that. I know, John. It's uh, 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 watching the game, and I think every Celtic fan, fan, not everyone, but most Celtic fans thought the same. As soon as they missed that penalty, it was going to be a struggle for the end to the end of the game. And it wasn't a struggle, but we just we just gave Rangers a chance, didn't we, the last 20 minutes? Aye, we did. The two missed, uh, the two offside goals for Dyson, the missed penalty, the shot after shot after shot peppering their keeper. 
Uh, it should have been finished at half time again, Xander. Uh, but thanks for that. We would never sell a club. I uh, we need to start taking our chances. Totally agree with you. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to read the full comment out, but she wants to keep uh, McInnes's big mouth shut. I think. Um, yeah. And that will finish it for that sentence. Next up was Jim Ritchie. Thanks again. We would never sell a club, by the way. Yeah, thanks again, Paul. Thank you. I've not seen your guesses in the comments. You've normally got them in by now. But Jim Ritchie was up again. When you listen to Rangers fans about how biased refs are against them, it's mad. The ref let so many violent tackles go. Then a Celtic gets a yellow card for shaking hands with the Celtic fans. But we spoke about that at great length. Uh Rangers, Celtic players getting kicked off the park, not a card for it. And Dyson Maeda takes a booking for shaking the Celtic fans' hand and uh, no causing any danger. There's no Rangers fans in the ground. Why was he booked? That's right, John. Yeah. And I'll tell you something as well. The reason why Lundstrom went in so heavy on Alistair Johnson is because you thought he was running away with it. They were getting away with absolute murder the full game, John. And uh, he thought he was getting away with that tackle. Oh, he absolutely did. And uh, Kenny Miller, I keep saying Kenny, no Kenny, thinking that was a just a yellow card no more. And his rage was beautiful. Big Sutton putting him in his place. Uh, it's great just seeing Kenny Miller sick. And it, it was just so sweet to see that. Never mind Lundstrom. The tackle was bad, we all know that. Deserve red. Should get a 10-match suspension for it. OK, I'm getting a bit carried away. Maybe a two-match ban. I think that's what he'll get. Yeah. But... Uh, Aye, Kenny Miller's uh, tears. Beautiful, Xander. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's good. It's good to see that wee guy sick into as you say, John. He's just all he does is wear blue tint. You know, everything is comes out of that guy's mouth. Maybe not quite as bad as Boyd, but everything that's ever is it's just he, he's no unbiased, let's put it that way. No, these uh Rangers pundits, ex Rangers players acting as pundits they shouldn't be anywhere near these Sky television and all that mm -hmm. you know what I mean they're just I was what listening to uh, Clyde last night I don't normally but after a derby game I always do just if we win because I yeah. love to hear the six Seth Conings you know but <laughs> it was great uh, that Andy Halliday because he's not too bad Andy Halliday right enough he agreed with the red card and all that so fair play to him but most of them are just uh, ex-strangers players as pundits, they're pretty bad, Xander, to be honest with you. Yeah, they're totally, totally biased, isn't it, what they're saying? It's, it's all for one thing of Glasgow, so that's up to them if they want to, you know, give their opinions. That's totally up to them, I suppose, John. Aye, the big Chris Sutton's faces at Kenny Moore was priceless, wasn't it? Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I was I noticed that myself. <laughs> it's just looking as if he's an alien or something, isn't it? Just... Uh, You'd be amused by what Kenny Miller's saying, isn't he, Chris Sutton? Miller, uh, big Chris Sutton does that with all the, the ex-Rangers players, didn't he? He looks, looks at them like they're aliens, Boyd and all that. He's just hilarious, Chris Sutton. He doesn't need to say it, and he's funny. Damn. Just, just, just a look. <laughs> says it all. Says a Damn. million words. He's actually quite good to pond at big Chris Sutton. He really is. He just tells the truth, doesn't he? He, he even uh, speaks up against Celtic sometimes. He's not a cheerleader yet. But he's brilliant. I love Big Chris Sutton. Loved him as a player. Loved him as a pundit. One of the best, Sander. Yeah, definitely. Totally agree, John. Uh, and the last comment goes to Mad about football, who says, relax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good comment. Actually, a good comment, isn't it? Because the sense of relief that final wish went on Saturday, that was what I did. I just started to relax, John. Aye, I was relaxed on uh, Saturday, but now that Wednesday's approaching, I'm starting to get a wee bit nervous again. But uh, might no need to be after the night. Will you be watching that game? No, no, John, I never watch their games, especially if it's a game that they've got a great chance of winning. So, uh, unless they've got a slight chance of drawing or losing, I'll maybe watch it. But I'll listen to it. I'll listen to wee bits on the radio, maybe put it on, switch it off, maybe. Aye. So, what's the goal difference right now? Is it seven goals between the two clubs? Yeah, seven goals, uh, plus seven for Celtic, John. Uh, so, uh, you're hoping for a narrow a narrow win for Rangers today, if, if they're going to win. Um, and obviously, a draw ends it anyway. Well, sure, if you'll take a narrow win, you'll take a narrow defeat. 
<laughs> we'll wait and see, John. Um, we'll wait and see. Uh, all right, that wraps it up for the night. Uh, thanks for coming on, John, reading all the comments. Uh, good luck to Celtic Wednesday night. Uh, hopefully it's party time on Wednesday night down at Celtic Park. I'll be there, John, if you got any thinking about coming down yourself. Uh, I'll, see, I'll see Xander. It's, it's a bit of a distance to travel, you know, but I'll see, I'll see, see if I feel uh, driving away down there. Yeah, but, uh, we'll try and get a wee video and put it on the podcast. And we'll, the fireworks displays, etc, etc. So we'll put it on the pod, John. Um, so good luck to Celtic against Kamal. Anyway, good luck to Dundee tonight as well. Uh, and we'll catch you on the post-match tomorrow night, John. I'll catch you tomorrow, Xander, and get your grandsons out with the fireworks if it's when it gets clenched. <laughs> yeah, I'll think about it. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> All right, right. right. right I'll see you tomorrow. can follow me, letting them after. I'll catch you later, Xander. Right, catch you tomorrow, John. Hey, hey, hey.